to build such a mini black hole, you'd probably need crystals because crystals appropriately cut and appropriately, pre appropriately resonated would, would be the perfect material to make that link since crystals molecules, first of all crystals are 70% water and then the crystal molecules are actually um, tetrahedral. The crystal molecules are very coherent if you have good crystals and if they were cut in the appropriate geometry of the 64 tetrahedron grid with the right gases involved, you could create those dynamics. Because of my studies of the sun gods, you know, and because of my studies about the dynamic of, of ancient civilization, I had a really strong feeling that those crystals, and I, I'm going to tell you what it looks like right now, it's 64 tetrahedron grid inside a crystal ball. They're very small tetrahedron, and they're inside a crystal ball, and there's gases inside that ball. Okay? This is not some esoteric New Age crystal. Okay? This is highly technical, you know, you know, technological stuff. Okay? It's not like a raw crystal you grab from a mountain and start meditating with. Okay? Now, when I believe that many of the New Age people remember the powers of the crystals because they remember that technology. Okay? The first person that talked about Atlantis was not some psychic. The first person that talked about Atlantis was Plato. Plato was, is and was extremely respected. And we used most of Plato's stuff except the three books that he wrote about Atlantis. And when he wrote these books, in all of them he mentions that this is not some story, this is factual. And he says he got it from the high priest in Egypt. And he describes a very advanced civilization that has a source of power, which is later as well described by Edgar Cayce, has a, has a source of power that they call a crystal of extreme luminosity, of extreme power. I believe that is the crystal that can be built, the crystal of Atlantis, to create a link to the geometry of space. Do you guys all follow this? I was starting to read the Bible and, you know, I was, I was finding these plates of the, of the description of God and, you know, with it came words like, the throne of God was the crystal sea, you know, da 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 da. Many references to crystal. Ezekiel in the Bible, the story of Ezekiel. Enoch, which is not a book of the Bible. Enoch was, the book of Enoch was found in Ethiopia. It was never re-edited. It's translated directly from the original text. In both these accounts, they describe some kind of ship that shows up in a big cloud and then they say a door opened and God called me onto his boat. And then inside it describes a crystal, a cri uh, the tr it describes the throne of God as crystals with rainbows all around it. You see? I think he was describing the power, the drive of that ship. So I was really intrigued. So I started to read the Bible and as I read the Bible, I realized something. I realized something I had never noticed before. That is, that most of the Bible is um, that most of the Bible is, is describing the Old Testament 
is describing um, I'm going to have to read and I can't hold this while I'm reading thank you appreciate it so that the Bible actually is describing something uh, the Old Testament anyway is describing something that is very very strange when the Old Testament talks about God it doesn't say and God it says and the Ark of the Covenant of God it turns out that the whole Old Testament is describing the comings and going of the Ark of the Covenant except for uh, Genesis which describes the the start but you see even when you read Genesis in the context of what we saw today you find that actually it's describing something very similar to the account of Atlantis given by Plato a civilization that develops with a very advanced technology and that allows them to live very very long in the Bible there's chapters after chapters describing people living 600 and 800 years okay and then eventually that that society was flooded which is what Plato said happened to Atlantis so actually Genesis could be an account of Atlantis I thought that was interesting and uh, so I started to study it more and more and I realized that the temples of Solomon was built for only one purpose to host the Ark of the Covenant of God at its center the Holy of Holy the power of all power the Ark and I thought wow that's interesting I didn't think that the Judaic tradition was about some object that they call the seat of God so I was looking into it and I was reading and I thought well that's interesting because in Genesis it talks about the tree of knowledge you know Adam and Eve um, and the tree of knowledge and the apple and so on well interestingly if you cut an apple in half you get a double torus with a seed in the middle which contains the possibility for a whole other apple tree right the singularity which has apples and singularities and apples and singularities and so on so I was reading that and then I realized as well this text when when uh, this is in Genesis it's uh, 424 when man began to increase a number on the earth and daughters were born to them the sons of God plural sons of God of God saw that the daughters of man were beautiful and they married them uh, any of them and they choose the nephilim were on the earth in those days that means they were not from the earth okay and also afterwards and the sons of God went to the daughter of man and had children with them they were the heroes of old men of the renown so this describe the sons of God that came to the earth so they were not from the earth and had children with the women of the earth and I started to realize wait a minute was this planetary system seeded you know it started to you know in anthropology we're missing a huge link between the uh, ancient Neanderthal and so on 
and the modern Homo uh, sapiens. And that link is that link we're missing is getting wider and wider. More and more re records we get. There's new skulls that have been discovered now that makes that link even harder to make. So I started to think about it, and I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. And so I continued to to read, and then I got across something really that perked my ears. It was in crossing of the of the sea. Exodus um, that's uh thirteen twenty two. By day the Lord went ahead of them.